Hi, Dan here. Hope you're doing really well. I've wanted to do a lesson on this for a long time now, something I've been practicing for a while. It's the chords from I Will Survive, and there's just so many things that you can practice over this. I'm going to dive straight in with the harmony, which is exactly the same, by the way, as Fly Me to the Moon. And there's this movement that happens in music a lot that happens in this tune. And it's just when you're in a key and chords move in fourth. So I want to show you that, but also um, some of the grooves that you can create, some of the different techniques that you can use. So we're in key of A minor. Now I've already done a video on harmonizing the notes in A mi minor to get the chords. And that's sort of really what this is all about. If you know the harmony, the underlying harmony, you can create so many bass lines because you have the tools at your disposal. So we're talking, we're talking chords and as bass players we will play mainly single notes of the arpeggios. So let's go through it. We've got A minor 7. These are just simply the chords from A minor. Then we go to a D minor 7. Now I'm just playing the arpeggios at the moment, so you need to make sure that you know all these arpeggios. I've got links to other videos I'll show you. To G7, and we're just moving up in fourths each time. I'm just putting that G down the octave. Up a fourth to C major 7. Down to F major 7. And we've got a B half diminished, or B minor 7 flat 5. Then we've got an E7. Now this is a classic minor 2-5-1. So we've got the 2 being the second degree of the scale, so B, and it's this B minor 7 flat 5. Now the 5 in a minor 2-5-1 is a dominant chord, often altered. As you can see, in the chords in A minor, the 5 chord is an E minor 7, but that wouldn't have the correct... It's got a minor third. And it's the major third that gives you a dominant that sounds, gives you a stronger pullback to the one. So that's just a really common thing that you see, a two, five, one. It's a jazz progression. And the, the two chord, or the five chord, sorry, is that dominant. So we've got that two, five, one at the end, which is a really good thing for you to learn. That's the half diminished. That's the dominant. We might come back to that in a minute, but just the, the what you can do over this is, is huge. So let's go from the beginning, and I want to take the notes of that arpeggio, of those arpeggios, and sort of start to create lines. Now, I Will Survive is a disco tune. I've got the backing track there that you can download for free if you follow the link. And because it sounds that way, I'm playing it in a disco funky way. But if you, if you were to play Fly Me To The Moon, which is exactly the same chords, you'd do a walking bass line. The notes are exactly the same. So what you do to the notes is what creates music. So I'm gonna kind of go, you know, a funky sort of disco-y type thing. So let's just be quite prescriptive. And I'm just gonna do roots, octaves, sevenths, and fifths. Okay, so on, on any of the minor chords and the dominant seventh chord, it's the same shape. So on the A, you've got fifth fret uh, E string, that's A. Octave, two across, two down. Two frets down from that, your minor seventh. And the fifth is two frets across and one down from the root. You've got to know this pattern. I can use that on the first three chords. Because they all contain those same intervals, okay? And I was just going... Adding a little ghost note in there. Make sure you really deaden the strings there. And just doing the same pattern, let's continue that. So now we've got C major 7. 
which is the same pattern except the major seventh is one fret next to the one fret down from the octave right next to it now we're going down to the f same chord f major seven okay so notice that we're doing this fourth movement every time fourth note in the scale that's a fourth it's on the same fret as as the root note except when we go from where we are now so from the f to the b it's it's a different sort of movement the b is sort of like one fret higher and one string down it's sort of a tritone away slightly different pattern i'm going to play that at the seventh fret it's the same chord as the first two except with a flat five so minus seventh flat five that's the clue and the flat five is one fret higher and one string away one string down from the root then we get to the e7 which contains the uh, we can continue that same pattern as before the root the five the octave and the flat seven so you can almost create musical sounding exercises um, whilst making music you can you can even play exactly this kind of idea when you're playing the song it sounds it sounds great let's do a few more different ideas let's try octaves going through the notes of the scale <laughs> The scale is a natural minor. So all I was doing there was octaves going either ascending or descending down the notes of the scale. To do that, you obviously need to know the scale in many different patterns. And that's the case that if you, any scale, any key, you need to know it, not just in one octave, which would be that. So I'm walking up the scale there and then jumping one note higher than my destination, which remember is that D minor seven. Let's descend because I'm landing on that G7 there. I'm just going up and then skipping the note and coming back and then descending. There's the F major seven. They're just going chromatically up. So F octaves, F, G, A, and then just up one fret. That leads nicely to that B uh, minus seven flat five. Now what's happening when we've got this E dominant seventh on that, on that sort of five chord going to the one instead of the E minus seven is that we're taking, this is sort of a bit technical, but instead of an A natural minor, we're playing an A harmonic minor scale. So if you really want to know the mode that would be built on that, it's called a Phrygian dominant. And that's something that you can play over that. So uh, this is the E2. See how that fits? You could just think A harmonic minor, which is exact, exactly the same as the natural minor, but that seventh note got one fret. And that note there, the, the up one fret, it gives you that major third on the E7, which pulls you back to the one chord. Now that theory is just something that you pick up over time and you, you notice, especially in jazz music, that I Will Survive is more or less a jazz tune, just, just with disco applied to it. So that two, five, one at the end, it's just one of those things that, that um, apart from that E7 chord, all the other chords fit within the key of A natural minor. So if you if you get that, and then you see this E7 chord and you're like, what is that? Where does that come from? It's just this two, minor 251 that happens where you get a borrowed chord. Um, not all songs stick to one key. Um, you've got plenty of songs that are in a major key or a minor key. Some mix things up. Some are in sort of Dorian tonality. So um, just a few things that you'd need to, to learn. Uh, one is to harmonize the A natural minor scale in any key. And then the major 
um, scale as well. And that will cover lots of different styles of music. Another good thing to practice over this is just playing some, some chords. I'll do it first and then I'll show you and I'll explain something. If we play a chord, so I'm going on the 12th fret of the A string then, I'm playing an A minor seventh. I've got a root, a minor third, and a minor seventh. Then I'm going to go down to the D minor seven, tenth fret of the E string. So I've got all the notes there on the same fret on the E, D, and and G string. So I've got a root, a minor seventh, and a minor tenth, which is just the minor third up the octave. There's the G seven, C set, C major seven, F major seven. There's the B minor seven, flat five, flat five, E seven. Play it in either way there. Even though I'm playing those as chords, you can then do exactly the same thing playing those notes separated. Now I'm playing it very much like an exercise there, because this is the way you want to just get your, your harmony together to know exactly what notes that you can play over each chord. And you just need to know this inside out. I can't tell you how many tunes are written with, with these chords, these exact arpeggios and chord shapes, and, and how the, hopefully that you've seen in this lesson how they relate within a key, okay? And you can just do so many things with that. Once you get um, that under your fingers, you can either practice to this backing track or just get a, a metronome together because you want in real time to get some ideas going. Um, you know, let's use, uh, let's go. I'm just doing roots and octaves here. Can't really get much simpler than that unless you just play root notes. And then maybe you would start to bring in the thirds. So you're seeing which ones of those have major thirds. Then you can bring in sevenths and, and then maybe link up the chords a bit better. You know, you can approach it from above or below chromatically. Kind of idea. There's a lot going on here, but really the fundamental principles are that you have a key and you have a bunch of chords within the within that key and, and lots of songs like I Will Survive are using that. Another idea for you to practice, why don't you do the same thing? So we've got root, I'll use, I'm using slapping this time. So I'm going root, octave, and then whatever the seventh is of the chord. running down the scale at the end. So I'm hoping that you're you're starting to get a few light bulb moments and and an opportunity to, you have to know the fretboard to do this. You have to know obviously a little bit of theory to know this. And then it's all about taking those sort of um, cold concepts and turning them into music. Um, once you do this, you'll start, I think, to hear music a little bit better as well, because once you hear you know, some bass lines in songs, you'll go, oh, oh, I can hear the chords, you know. That dominant seventh has got a very strong sound. So you want, as you're going along, to link all these patterns and shapes to the sounds that they're creating. And at the end of the day, you know, if you're new to this, then you might need to watch this video one more time. You might need to watch the other videos I've done on harmonizing scales. But at the end of the day, it's all about creating music. And, and don't worry if you're a bit lost with this, because the more you do it, the more the more it, it, it seeps in, the more you understand this. It, it's OK to not to be a bit confused by this at first, completely OK. But just keep going with it. And what you'll find is that 
you're going to see this and you're going to hear this a lot in different types of music, so I would persevere with it. So that's just a few ideas for you to practice. Um, this could be something that you that you practice every day. You know, you won't get bored of it. There's so many different things that you can do with this. So if you do have any questions, anything that you're confused with, just put a comment below and I'll get back to you. Otherwise, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be fantastic. And I'll see you on the next video.